morning, native. Yeah, hi. Um, they wanted me to bring you this corn. I actually don't know where they've all gone. I feel like there was more of us uh -huh. before you guys got here. Right. Anyway, whatever the case may be, this corn is for you. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, well, that's sweet of you. I appreciate that. Yeah, Happy anytime. Okay. Hey, and while I have you here, yeah. uh, I'm meaning to talk to you about something. Okay. okay. I wanted to uh, purchase the, this land from you. Okay, um, wait, what? So, do you have a credit? The land? Do you take credit? Do you have a credit limit? You mean like the land that we're standing on? Let's do... The earth? Let's do 10. You can't buy the land. Can we do like 20? I'd be like, you want to buy the sky or like buying, you know, the tree or... Oh, I see what you're saying. That okay. lamp post um, over there, the road. I, you can't own the land. Okay. <laughs> the land? No one can own the land. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Hold on and call somebody. Oh, you're gonna call somebody? Yeah. Who, who exactly? Hold on. <laughs> who exactly? Stay here, don't leave. Okay. Who exactly are you gonna call? Yeah, hi. Uh huh. Yeah, it's me. Um, you know those pilgrims I got? <laughs> One of them's here and she wants to buy the land. I know that's what I said! <laughs> Topics. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. This is our Thanksgiving episode. I'm Bryn. I'm Ben. We're going to be talking today about Sky Ferrera. Ferrera, I think. Ferrari. Ferrari. Uh, Aurora Borealis. Her, her new record, first debut album, My, uh, Nighttime My Time. Yes. Uh, neither of us were particularly familiar with Miss Ferrari's. I came across her because uh, I was just looking at the Bowery Presents website to see what bands were coming up live yep. soon and she was on there. I was like, who is this? And we So I checked out some of her videos and listened to a little bit of the new album. She's a LA singer, born in Los Angeles. Yeah, you, whenever I messaged you about her, you knew a lot about her. I, I she's Not the music, but you knew about her. She's been in the news a little uh, and we won't go into that. All I know she, about her personally is that her album cover photo was taken by the director of Enter the Void. Gaspar No. Which is a movie that I loved. Me too. Her history is interesting. She came out with a lot of singles, a lot of EPs. Right. She came out with an EP called As If. Uh, and this is her debut album. Uh, we're gonna talk about it. I would, I'm very curious how you feel about this record. I liked it. I found it to be, you know, of course it's a pop album. Yeah, um, but it's it's a, an odd pop album, and uh, it's got a lot of cool sounds on it. Uh, I like most of the drum sounds. Some of the drums even sound like live drums. They may be live drums. Yeah, yeah. it really reminds me of some cross between this sort of you know very recent hipstery like Beach Fossils DIV DIIV uh -huh. uh, sort of kind of swoony, pretty, glossy. Uh, chill wave kind of stuff with a little like Dinosaur Jr. Uh, the Go-Go's. Sure. Uh, it, it's it's all over the place in terms of influence. Yeah, I found it to be a very, very interesting album. Uh, it's something that I would I just enjoy listening to. I like listening to it. I think the songwriting is what really makes this record for me. While it's verse, chorus, verse, chorus, I think the melodies are a little more intricate than I expected them to ever be. Yeah. Anxious to see what she'll do next. Too. Yeah, oh, I, she has a lot of promise, I think. She's an interesting person, she's very intelligent. I think if she gets with the right people, I think she could do a lot of interesting things. I hope she just doesn't become another, I don't know, Gaga or... Yeah, I think that she doesn't want to be that, no. and I don't, her music doesn't indicate that that's the direction she wants to go. But it's a very pop-punky kind of thing. Uh-huh. Um, but I'd like to hear her try some other stuff. I'll go ahead and give this record a, a, 
good seven. A lot there. There's a lot there. Um, yeah. Even though it's a pretty standard kind of deal, but I think it, it, it raises itself above it a little bit. I think I will give it an eight. Like, I really enjoy the music of it, and uh, it's fun stuff. Sky Ferreira. Sorry, Sky, if we're for butchering your name. This is the grand opening of Rough Trade Records, coming all the way from the UK to Brooklyn. Huge retail area, nice record selection, of course, I like. Uh, but uh, what's interesting about this place is in the back is this huge concert venue. Well, huge for a record store. And on the opening night party, Sky Ferreira played. Uh, her performance was really great. Her voice sounded amazing. Um, she liked a little confidence on stage that a seasoned professional ha would have. But uh, her voice sounded great, and uh, I'm mainly excited about this Rough Trade Records with the concert venue in the back opening here in Brooklyn. And I'm probably going to become a regular patron of this place and give them all my money all the time. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Let's see what Lucas Jr. thinks of it. Let's go. Just made for Lucas. I was born to dance, I think, and I dance. Do they play this in the Lucas clubs? I bet this is like all they play in the Lucas. Clubs. I don't know what you're talking about. I dance. How cold are you, Lucas? I'm fucking freezing my tits off. <laughs> I go to bed. <laughs> I don't want to play today. Okay, fine. I want to go home. So, what do you think of the record? I though? love it. Okay, you Let's love it. Let's go home okay. now. <laughs> All right, well, as it's Thanksgiving, I, uh, we're going to talk about some records that we are thankful for. Records that we feel blessed to have. Yes. Uh, and we will toast our coffees to the records. This is Steve Reich, music for a large ensemble. Actually, a lot of my records are going to be records that change the way I think about music, uh -huh. really open me up to new worlds in music. Yeah. And this one really did that. This really, really is fantastic, and I still think it's his best piece. The Cure. Standing on the beach. Okay. This was sort of my introduction to The Cure. Okay. I don't know how I ever found it. When I was in high school, I would just go to the record store and just buy stuff that I had no idea what it was, because I just liked the music. Like, there wouldn't be anything I didn't like. Sure. You know? So I would just go buy stuff. It didn't matter what. So I found this and was instantly taken with the music and I also had the VHS of the, of the, of the videos of all this too. So that video compilation I got I think for Christmas and so a lot of these songs feel very intimate to me. Oh, being good. indoors and being wintry and like just sitting inside and watching those videos endlessly. But this, this really changed the way I looked at music and sort of turned me into a new, a, down a new vein of, of alternative music. Oh yeah. This is a band called Wolves in the Throne Room. Uh, this is their record, A Diadem with 12 Stars. I found this band because their logo is ridiculous um, and I just wanted to hear what they sounded like just because it was so absurd, but it's, it's really beautiful, um, spacious, choral, angelic sounding almost like ambient music, which I was into at the time. Still my favorite Wolves of the Throne Room album, probably my favorite. I'll have to check that out. This is really Send good. me the link to that. I want to check that out. Yeah, absolutely. So there's like some operatic female vocals on here that yeah. aren't cheesy, like not like Nightwish or anything. It's just these really pretty. It sounds like they drink mead and they play it. It's nice. They are some intense people. I like they live that. on a farm with their wives. My next record, oh, uh, boy. Miles Davis, Kind of Blue. Um, my dad played all kinds of music in the house growing up, uh, from reggae to blondie to U2 to classical and a lot of jazz. And so this was a record that, probably the first jazz record I ever heard, but this to me is the standard by which jazz is judged. Like this to me is what jazz is supposed to be. This album kind of blew. I love So What with that, uh, uh, the bass of that, yeah. and then 
the idea that to me the horns were saying so what? So you have that to me was saying so what? This to me is what jazz is supposed to be. If you if you only have one jazz record, I recommend it be this. One. Look, if you're not listening to jazz and you don't like jazz and you've never heard this record, you're fucking missing out. If you Listen only have one jazz record, it should be Miles Davis kind of blue. I guess that wraps up our Thanksgiving segment. Okay, please tell us. Uh, comments. Tweet us. Have uh, a, have oh, a, okay. A turkey cookie. Please eat turkey. Have a lovely day. Uh, tweet us. Comment. Email us. Tell us what you're doing. Lucas! Oh. We'll uh, read them on, on the show, maybe. We'll, yep. uh, it'll be fun. We'll all share what we're thankful for. Happy Thanksgiving. It is now time for viewer emails. A section that we both love and adore and care about deeply. And hate. And sometimes it's a hate. love, no, I, I don't hate any part of it. <laughs> I no, love it all. It's a joy. Um, you can write us at our email, which is in the D box, um, or give us a comment on this video or any other video. We'll probably receive it. You can also leave it on my mom's answering machine. Yeah, because you have her number, you fuck. I don't ever check that machine, but she will send me the emails with the transcribed. She's nice. This email comes from Swamp Thang 86. Um, hey guys, I have a music question. Music question! Just curious, what's the best concert you've ever been to? Well, I can tell you about the one I went to recently, okay. which was pretty fresh in my mind because it was just a few days ago. <laughs> was it the best? For now. Really? You've been to a lot of concerts. I know. <laughs> it was the Black Lips. Okay. And I went with Nina. And so we're there uh, making our way towards the front, like after the opening band. And so we had our strategy of trying to figure out who was going to be the most violent in the audience. <laughs> uh -huh. And then, as soon as the first song starts, the whole crowd is chaos. It's anarchy. <laughs> Very first song, this guy is behind me is starting to fall over and he grabs me. And I'm trying to stay up, but I can't help it because then somebody else falls into me in front of me. So you fall So over. all three of us go down and there's this guy on top of me, I'm top of a guy, and our legs are in such a way where there's people stepping all over him so it's impossible to really move. And then more people are tripping on our legs and falling down. I'm like, well, we're gonna get trampled to death down here. <laughs> and then at one point, I made eye contact with the guy who was looking at me, puts out his hand, I grab his wrist, he grabs my wrist and he hoists me up and I'm back in the front row and I realize my coat is gone. <laughs> yeah. I don't have my this coat. Yeah, this coat. <laughs> and Nina's gone too. What was happening with her? Being carried away by demons, apparently. What happened to her, apparently, is in the same moment, somebody punched her in the back of the head. What? And it knocked her down. And then immediately, somebody just dragged her out of the crowd across the floor. And so she was just like, like monsters just took her away. <laughs> so now I'm off, kind of off to the left, uh -huh. and she's way off to the far right, but I don't really know what happened. Like okay. it was it, literally in five seconds, the whole world had changed. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I guess I'm not gonna see my coat again. And then like three or four songs into it, this girl in front of me had my coat over her head and was just waving my coat. I was like, hey, that's mine! <laughs> And I grabbed my coat, and the, and the thing was, I had my phone in this pocket, in my coat. Uh -huh. So when I got my coat back, it was not in there. So I was like, now I can't reach Nina, who's across the room or somewhere, or trampled to death, or in the emergency room. I have no idea. The black lips have killed <laughs> yeah. Nina. It's like, okay, I'm gonna go to the back, so that if she decides to make her way to the back, and like go to the bathroom, or yeah. go to the bar, or whatever, we'll run into each other and I can explain I don't have my phone anymore it's gone forever <laughs> um, but but never she never I never saw her and then the show ended so I make my way back up Did to it the continue being that rowdy yes it was insane <laughs> I go to the front and as I'm walking to the front through all the people that are leaving uh, I run into Nina I'm like oh hey I lost my phone like in the very first song and I'm sure it's not here, but I just want to look for it. And then somebody heard me, who was still at the front, like trying to get the set list off the stage. Yeah. 
And uh, she said, oh, is this your phone? And there was a phone like right up against the stage at the very front, that phone there. <laughs> and it still worked too. I was like, it's gonna be, if, if I do find it, it's gonna be just a spider web on the glass <laughs> and it will not work. But it was in fine condition. I couldn't believe it. That's insane. So in the very first song I lost, Nina, my coat, and my phone. And one by one, I got them all back. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Sounds like a terrible experience. It was. Like, in the middle of it, I was just, just mad. <laughs> well, that sounds terrible and amazing. Yeah. The best concert I ever went to was Battles. Just because it was amazing. Battles? They're one of the most talented. Well, it was when there was four people, not three. I've seen them twice. Once with four people, once with three people. Well, if I saw, if I had, like, when people ask that question, like, if you could have seen any like performance like in the history of music or whatever, uh -huh. it's either Rites of Spring or the Cure on the Prairie Tour. Yeah, I do remember the, the, the Disintegration Tour show was definitely felt magical, especially since it was like the second concert I'd ever seen. The light show was, oh, was amazing. I mean, it was it was all like aquas and greens and stuff, like the album cover. Yeah, like, yeah. The concert was like living in that album cover. So amazing. And it was like, it was like you were just swimming in the ocean the whole time and Robert Smith is there singing to you. That sounds like the best thing that ever happened. I really like the Cure viewers. Me too. A lot. Me too. So, yeah. Well, that's been viewer emails. And that concludes this episode. And until next time, top, top of, of the world, world to you. When you're saying that everyone's gone, are you saying that I killed them all? Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought you meant. <laughs>